Name one of the Ten Commandments. Any of the Ten Commandments. Did someone just say, do not lie? What do you think? Do you think I'll manage to never ever tell a lie again? Do you think I'll manage to make the target? I've got a bad shoulder. Okay, let's try another commandment. What about do not steal? Who thinks I'm gonna hit the target? Who thinks I'm gonna manage not to steal? Okay, watch this. Let's see if I can keep any more of the Ten Commandments. Blasphemy. Adultery. Murder. You see, the truth is this, I can't even keep five of the Ten Commandments, but if Jesus was stood here right now, he'd never miss a shot. You see, Jesus Christ kept all of the Ten Commandments. He fulfilled all of the law. And not only that, he never ever did anything wrong. He never had an impure thought. He never gossiped. He never disrespected his mother. He never told a lie. He was totally righteous. And that's really, really good news. Not just for me, but for you also. Let me tell you something. There are only two types of people that get into heaven. Perfect people and forgiven people. Now, is there anyone today watching this video who is perfect? You're not, are you? But every single one of us can be forgiven if we receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Saviour and Lord. Look, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I want you to imagine that every piece of paper in my hand represents one sin. So if this was your life, how many sins have you committed? How big would your pile of paper be? You see, what sin does is it separates us from God. It blocks our view of God. The Bible says no unclean thing can enter into heaven and our sin blocks us from getting into heaven. So whether you've got a big pile like me or whether you're the only person on planet earth who's only ever committed one sin, do you notice how it still blocks us from getting into heaven? But 2,000 years ago when Jesus died on a cross, he took our sin and he scrunched up into a ball and he buried it at the bottom of the ocean. So any man, any woman, any child, any old person who says, Lord God, have mercy on me. God can forgive your sins in the past, present and future and wipe your slate totally clean. The Son of God who constantly met the target, who never did anything wrong, can give you his righteousness as a gift. And not only that, because he rose from the dead, he can give you a hope beyond the grave. And if I'm honest, I've preached this message a hundred times, maybe even a thousand times, and it still baffles me that people can know this good news and reject it day after day, week after week. But if you do reject it, God says, that's fine. I respect your decision. I'm not gonna force myself on you. I respect your decision, but spend eternity apart from me in a place called hell where you will bear the consequences of your sin. But it doesn't have to be that way because Jesus took your sin on the cross and paid for it. So my dear friends, I plead with you, come to Jesus Christ today. So come on, Joe, tell us, do we still need to keep the 10 commandments then? Well, the answer is yes, we actually do. Not to earn our way into heaven. Let's make that abundantly clear. There is nothing we can do to ever secure ourselves a place in heaven. The Bible says our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. So the best things that we do, in other words, are terrible and they make no contribution to our salvation. Just like you yourself listened to this video, you had no contribution to your birth. So the second birth, when we're born again, we cannot contribute to that whatsoever. It is only trusting alone in Jesus Christ, in his righteousness, in his perfect track record, that's what secures us a place in heaven. But there are actually three reasons why you do need to keep the Ten Commandments still. Number one, we keep the Ten Commandments to show God just how grateful we are that he was willing to save us, that God would love me. How could God love someone as vile and as sinful as me? And yet he does. Jesus Christ himself said, if you love me, 
keep my commands. And we just want to show the Lord God that yes, we do love him and the least we can do is to obey him and follow after him and try to live that holy life that God has called us to live. The second reason why we keep the Ten Commandments is because it actually makes us happier when we do so. People think that God just wants to put a wet blanket upon your fun, but no, that's just a lie from the devil. You see, sin makes us think that if we run the show, we'll be happier. But just look at world history, look at when men have tried to run the show, has it made us happier? And if you're an atheist, you kind of know what I'm talking about. You've got to agree with me that if every man, if every woman on planet Earth obeyed the Ten Commandments, we'd have a much happier world, wouldn't we? I mean, which of you employers want your employees to steal from you? Which of you men want your wives to commit adultery and vice versa? When we follow God's ways, it leads to a much happier people and a much happier world. Holiness really does equal happiness. And the third reason why we still need to obey the Ten Commandments as Christians is that it shows the world that we are ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus himself said, you shall know them by their fruits. And when we bear good fruits, we bring honor and praise to our heavenly Father. When we live like a Christian, we shine like stars and the whole world knows that we are his disciples. I wonder, did you ever hear the story about the mega church pastor whose car broke down? His car broke down so he needed to get the bus to work one day. So he goes up to the bus driver and he gives him a five dollar bill, expecting to just get a few coins in change. Do you know how much the bus driver gave him? He gave him twenty dollars by accident. So the mega church pastor, he sits at the back of the bus and he's in turmoil. What should I do? Will the bus company really miss that money? I mean, they're so rich after all, and I could really do with this extra bit of money to fix my car. As he gets off the bus, he looks at the driver and he says, you do realize, sir, you made a mistake. You gave me $20 in change. Here, I want to give it you back. And the bus driver said, I didn't make a mistake. I know exactly how much money I gave you. I've been listening to your sermons on the internet, and I wanted to know if Christians are really honest. My dear precious believer, be careful how you live your life because you just don't know who's watching, who's listening. The world very often won't read the Bible, but they'll read the story of your life. So make sure you live like a Christian every single day that we might win souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, there's one super important thing that I forgot to mention. We can never follow Jesus Christ. We can never live like a Christian without the power of the Holy Spirit operating through us. So if you would like to know how to be filled with the Holy Spirit, I made a video here. I think you'll find it quite helpful. And if you haven't yet subscribed to this ministry, please do. We'd love your friendship here at Off The Curb Ministries, please click here also. God bless you all and thank you for watching.